sir. Welcome back to Fast Break Bets presented by Betting Pros. You know me, no the voice, no guy is me. Really real, villain real. It's Ralph from Virginia here at your service. <laughs> <laughs> all right last day of WNBA was interesting <laughs> we go one and two ariel atkins over 14 and a half points never in doubt she was cruising the mystics were cruising they were Handling the fever, and then the fourth quarter comes around, and they look up at the scoreboard, and they don't see Ryan Howard not getting to the four and a half rebounds that didn't cash, so that was play number one that missed for us. They didn't see that, but they did see the dream go up big on the Liberty, and the Mystics proceeded to pack it in because they had a 15-point lead in the fourth quarter and ended up winning by one. Mystics minus two and a half. Mystics first half cash, though. So if you got that, hey, bright side, Mystics first half. But And if you played the halftime full-time, you still cash that. I think that was like plus 130. But Mystics laying two and a half is a loser because the Mystics just gave up on the rest of the season when they saw that they weren't going to make the playoffs. Res I, I got to respect it to a point. All right. A little bit different of an episode here today. On a Friday, Um, no games. No games won't be happening until Sunday when the WNBA playoffs kicks off. So I'm going to do a quick little preview, probably put in a couple futures bets for the playoffs. And then, yeah, that's it. It's going to be nice, quick, easy. Going to get you guys on up out of here because there isn't an actual game pick here to give out. So, before I do that, though, got to talk to you about the Betting Pros app. Make sure you get into that Betting Pros app. You go ahead, create your account, and sync your sports book. You can sync the sports books that you use. Let everybody see your ROI. It'll, it'll do all of that. It'll track your picks for you. You can track your picks on there as well. Like You can do a whole bunch of things. They have a whole bunch of systems in the NFL that you can build and all these things. Or you can just tell somebody else's systems. Like, hey, maybe you like my systems. You want to tell my systems. Maybe you want to tell d bro systems or in somebody else go do that you can do all of that you can follow people you can follow me at bettingpros.com slash terrell that's my that's the place where you can follow me but hey get into the betting pros app wherever you get your apps app store google play store android store whatever it's called go in there get the betting pros app to a day all right gang we have Four playoff series in the WNBA playoffs. If you are unaware and you may not be into it, but you're a fan of me, one, appreciate you rocking with the show. Two, let's inform you the first round of WNBA playoffs is a little non standard. Best of three series between all of the teams, and it's a home, home, and away. So the higher seed gets two home games, and then if a game three is necessary, they have to go on the road and get it done. So, is that a big disadvantage for the lower seed having to play back-to-back -back games on the road here? Yes. But if you do get a win, you are rewarded very, very well with a home game. And there's a couple of teams that I think that if you give them a home game in that last game, I don't know. But there's also teams that I think that they can get it done on the road either way. So... I'm going to talk about two series real quick, get them out the way, because I don't have any plays that I would make betting in those series. First one is obvious. One seed, New York Liberty. They are on, they are at home, sorry. They're at home with the Atlanta Dream. Game one is going to happen Sunday. They're going to get, the, like I said, the home, home away. Atlanta Dream just secured that spot against the Liberty. Uh, later earlier tonight and so now they'll be playing their best of three series here in New York I can't make a bet on this game because or this series I'm sorry I can't make a bet on this series because there's I mean the price is minus 2500 for the Liberty on the money line for the series I of course I think the Liberty are gonna win there's really no play 
if you could, you know, you go out there, you have to think Atlanta's going to steal a game. If you want to make any bet on this series, you're betting Atlanta steals a game. And I don't think Atlanta gets a game. To be honest, I think the Liberty dominate this series from start to finish. Uh, I mean, Liberty game one also win the series is minus 800. Liberty 2-0 to win the series is minus 390. Like, there's no play I could really give you there. So I think Liberty going to get it done. That's really about it for that. For the second series, Minnesota Lynx are welcoming the Phoenix Mercury for their first of two games. Minus 900 for the Lynx, plus 610 for the Mercury. Again, nothing really I can give you because Minnesota are a very, very good home team. I think they're going to be able to get it done at home. And then, I mean, are we really going to back the Phoenix Borons on the road? Like, they've been a horrible road team all season really before this podcast was even thought of they've been a bad home team so i mean a bad road team so like that's always a spot that i'm just kind of weary i'm not really looking to back the phoenix mercury on the road and so in the playoffs it's not making any difference i think that minnesota can get a 2-0 sweep there as well so nothing really to play uh minnesota two to nothing is minus 260 so i guess maybe if you're one of those I like to play big favorites. Then you would play Minnesota two to nothing, New York Liberty two to nothing. That gets you minus one thirty six. Like, I guess you can do that. That's not really for me, but if somebody out there likes, I think it's free money. I mean, it's, to be honest, I think it's free money. It's just not my speed. All right, now we start to get interesting. Three seed in the six seed, Connecticut Sun and the Indiana Fever. The Connecticut Sun are minus 184 on the money line for the series. Indiana Fever plus 154. So, general thoughts about the series. You have two completely different teams when it comes to the playoffs. You have the Connecticut Sun who are playoff battle tested. I mean, they are the bride... I mean, they're the bridesmaid. I'm sorry. They're the bridesmaid, never the bride. When it comes to the WNBA playoffs, they'll either get themselves to a semifinal, they'll get themselves to the finals, but they'll never win the big one. That's partially the reason why Kurt Miller, now coach of the Los Angeles Sparks, left. And now we bring in Stephanie White and trying something new because Connecticut Sun are trying to get that championship that has eluded them for. I mean, it's so many years now, back when Jacqueline Jones was over there winning MVPs and they still couldn't win the title. So you have a Connecticut team that's played a lot of playoff series. I mean, a lot of playoff series. Then you have on the other side of ball, the new hottest sensation, Caitlin Clark with Indiana Fever and a team that I don't think anybody, I mean, Erica Wheeler probably has some playoff experience in there. Uh, I know Kelsey Mitchell's never been to the playoffs. Leah Boston, never been to the playoffs. Liz Smith, never been to the playoffs. Uh, Lexi Hall, never been to the playoffs. Like, so there's, there's not a lot of playoff experience here. The concern for Indiana, because I know a lot of people are running to bet Indiana. The concern for Indiana is they're 8-11 on the road this season. Connecticut dominate them when they played in Connecticut this season. Granted, those were earlier in the season, but Connecticut did dominate. Connecticut is, especially when Mohegan Sun is rocking, it's a tough place to play. But Caitlin Clark has now been so polarizing that, you know, it kind of like, yeah, it's a road game, but the fans are going to be cheering for her a little bit too. So... Another part of this series, the Dijanae Carrington and Caitlin Clark matchup. How does that line? How does that align? Caitlin Clark start to figure out in the later part of the years, but Dijanae Carrington's a very, very good defender, so we're going to see how that matches up. And then you have Kelsey Mitchell, and what is the health of Kelsey Mitchell, and is she going to be okay? Because she went out there in a the game today, five minutes, turned an ankle, was out for the game. Now. If the game meant something, would she have come back and played? Probably. Does that make you feel good? Not really, because what if there's a reaggravation? Like, it doesn't take anything for her to step on somebody's foot in the game, and then she's out again, and this time for extended time. So, 
that's concerning. Ultimately, and what I think it is for me, is that the offense for Connecticut has a lot more room to be really, really good with Marina Mabry in the lineup. Marina Mabry's been playing really well. They just need DeWanna Bonner to wake up, and if DeWanna Bonner wakes up and plays really well, I think this offense is going to give Indiana some issues, and I just don't trust Indiana defensively. Like, I don't. I see Connecticut turn on that that switch defensively. I haven't seen Indiana do it consistently. And so this is a bit, very, very big opportunity. I think the head coaching edge, the coaching edge goes to Connecticut. Um, and so really what it is here, and this is how I'm betting this, because there's only one way that I think Connecticut wins this. And I think that it is if they just go ahead and sweep it in Connecticut. I think that if you give this Caitlin Clark, Kelsey Mitchell, Aaliyah Boston team a home game in a game three, it's really, really, like, it's going to be really, really hard not to think that Indiana might be able to get it done in that situation. You know how long it's been since Indiana has had playoff basketball in Indiana? I don't think you can let it get back to Indiana. I really don't. I don't think you can let it get back to Indiana. So if I played this game, and I'm highly considering it. I haven't gotten there yet. I will admit, I haven't gotten there yet. If I played this game, it would be Connecticut's son to win the series 2-0 at plus 130. If you like Indiana for the series, take Indiana 2-1 plus 280. I think Connecticut gets one at home regardless. You really, you really kind of hope if you're Indiana, they steal the first one. Connecticut gets the second. Zigzag theory, you go back home, get the third one. So if you like Indiana, I, I think you play Indiana plus 280 to get it done in Indiana. I do not think they just sweep them two to nothing in Connecticut. However, I'm on the Connecticut Sun. I think Connecticut Sun get it done. If I had to play, it would be plus 230. I mean, I'm sorry. It'd be uh Connecticut Sun two to nothing plus plus two to nothing plus one thirty. I'm sorry. So two to nothing plus one thirty Connecticut Sun. That's what I would play. If you like Indiana, I think you should play Indiana two to one plus 180, I mean, plus 280, I'm sorry, 2-1 to one plus 280 is what I see, and say that Indiana gets it in a game three. All right, game four. This is probably the series, <laughs> like, this is probably the series. I'm surprised this series number is this big, but the Las Vegas Aces and the Seattle Storm Aces are laying 460 on the money line, Storm plus 360 to get it done. So it's so funny how the season, how the second half of the season has actually kind of changed my thoughts on both of these teams, to be honest. Um, so you have the Las Vegas Aces who coming into the second half of the season, I was down on. I thought that, OK, they're going to link. They're going to find their way into the playoffs, of course. Like, I didn't think they weren't going to be a playoff team. They're going to get into the playoffs. They're probably uh, match up against somebody and they'll give them a series because they haven't been playing defense, didn't look too good. Offense was inconsistent. Seattle Storm, complete opposite. They looked great before the break. They were top four in defense, top four in offense. Everybody was healthy. They were playing well. And then they come back. And it just goes completely downhill for Seattle. They weren't able to cover. I think it was like the first five games or like five of the first six games they couldn't cover. And uh, then as he went out, Jewel went out towards the end of that stretch. But like it just never clicked after the break. And to this point, I mean, we call them the Seattle Showers for a reason. Like, come on. <laughs> they, they lost their name for a reason. You hear that? Like, that's, that's, that's not terrorizing. However, the Las Vegas Aces have become a, a threat again. They have put together numerous good games. They have found a way to lock back in defensively and play a lot better defensively in WNBA. And they got the best player in the league, Asia Wilson. Like, that's, that, that is going to boost your offense already. But now when you start getting all those other pieces to play well, Jackie Young, Kelsey Plum, Chelsea Gray, then you get Tip Hayes off the bench, and then you get 
uh, Gustafsson coming off the bench, being able to give you some good minutes. Clark off the bench, able to give you some good minutes. Like, So the Aces have been playing more of a complete team. However, if there is a team that can give this Aces team the business, it is Seattle. If you remember, we bet the Aces lane seven. The, uh, what was this, an episode ago? Not last episode, episode before that. Bet them laying seven against Seattle because Jewel Lloyd was out. Because as he was out, I thought they were going to beat the crap out of him. Seattle was in that game. Seattle was in that game all the way to the fourth quarter. They ended up dying in the fourth quarter, but they were in that game. So, I already had in my mind, this is how I was going to play this series. Because it is a home and home for Vegas. And I do think this is going to be a competitive series. I like Seattle to go. And I'm kind of tipping my hand of where I'm going to be at on Sunday. But I think Seattle goes into Vegas and steals a game off the rip. I mean, off the rip. I think Seattle co- goes in there. Joel Lloyd comes back as he, as he comes back. And now we'll have to watch the injury report because as he had a concussion. So she has to actually clear concussion protocol so it's not as easy for her to come back as it is for Jewel to come back but if they're fully healthy I think they go in there they punch Vegas in the mouth they impose their will in a game one and then that's the wake up call that Vegas needs where they turn it around and they dominate a game two at home they handle business and then it comes to game, it comes down to game three and game three is going to be electric and ultimately, Vegas has shown me multiple times they can go into Seattle and get a win, and I think they do it again in a game three. So I do think Vegas gets a win here in this series. As much as I was on Seattle, as much as I have a Seattle uh, championship ticket in my pocket, I just, as they're playing right now, I don't like what I'm seeing from the Storm, but I love what I've seen from the Aces. I just don't think it's going to be easy for the Aces. I don't think they're going to walk out of this unscathed. They're going to drop a game, whether it's what I say in game one or maybe it's game two, but I think the Aces drop a game. So here's my bet, and this is a bet that I'm making because I feel pretty confident in this. I like the Las Vegas Aces to win the series 2-1 at plus 290. Plus 290, Aces win the series 2-1. Doesn't matter what order, just win the series 2-1. We go to a game three on the road. While that is a very, very good spot, and maybe I'll have to reevaluate as I watch the series, but I think the Vegas Aces have proven that they can come up big on the road, i.e. winning in game four of the WNBA playoffs last year in New York. I think they're 100% going to be able to go in there and handle business against Seattle if it comes to that I like the aces 2-1 in the series plus 290 that is a play I'm 100% making so I like that play I haven't gotten there on the sun yet but I think I will take the sun 2-0 plus 130 I know it's probably not the more popular bet it's probably going to be people in my uh, comments like yeah you don't know what you're talking about da, da, da. but I'm going to take the veteran playoff team over a new playoff team nine times out of ten unless I have something compelling and I just don't think I see it with the Indiana team that just doesn't look good defensively. I think that's going to really, really come up big in the playoffs is how you can be able to play on the defensive side of the ball. So there you go. Only one official future for the playoffs right now for me, and that is Aces minus uh, Aces. 2-1 Two to one to win the series plus two ninety. Uh, I already have a Seattle future. That's at plus at thirty five to one right now. So I have the worst part of that number. Uh, <laughs> I think that Minnesota at plus three fifty is tempting because I do think Minnesota is a very good team. I think the Connecticut Sun are tempting because now they have set themselves up where they get to dodge both the Aces and the Liberty. So it's kind of that head-to-head matchup with the Minnesota Lynx. And if that if it does come to that, let's not jump the gun, please. Let's not jump the gun. But Connecticut at plus 750 is interesting. Uh, that makes Indiana interesting as well because if Indiana does beat Connecticut, that means, hey, if you can handle a Lynx or Mercury team, but I think it's going to be Lynx, but it could be the Mercury. If you can handle them, that means you also got to duck the Liberty and the Aces on the route to the final. So 
it's a bunch of interesting things here. If you had to ask me, guns to my head, I still think it's the Liberty all the way. I think Liberty is going to win the title. Uh, ah, man, I really think it's still between the Liberty and the Aces, but Minnesota is really, really compelling. Like, Minnesota is really, really compelling because they've just been, been able to find ways to score and play really, really good defense. How they play at home, that's going to matter in the playoffs. So, that's where I'm at right now. <laughs> That's the that's the major bet that I'm making. That's the one that I placed and I'm ready to go. Aces two to one in the series plus two ninety. All right, that's it. Uh, make sure you give us a follow at Betting Pros on TikTok and X. Make sure you give us a follow on Instagram at Betting Pros NFL and on YouTube at Betting Pros. YouTube.com slash Betting Pros. There you go. And I'm at really real underscore underscore. That's really it. I thought this was gonna be a shorter episode, but I ended up talking for a little bit longer. So sorry about that, guys. Other than that, I have nothing else to say, nothing else to do. No other way of ending the podcast just because it's like this. We are out of here. Whoa, I said that and didn't hit my little button. Okay, there's the button.